We're going to start out with our gospel lesson today, the calling of Philip and Nathaniel. And the calling of Philip and Nathaniel is sort of funny in a way. You get this calling of Philip first, and it's kind of easy. Jesus just simply says, follow me. And apparently that's all it took. And Philip just kind of turned and followed, and then Nathaniel comes along. And Nathaniel's call gets a little cheeky because Philip finds Nathaniel. And then Philip says to Nathaniel, we found him about whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph of Nazareth. And Nathaniel replies pretty obnoxiously, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, if you don't know the context of this, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Nazareth was right next to the city of Cana, and Nathaniel's from Cana, and it's kind of like sister cities. And at present, today, if you were to go to Nazareth, it's way bigger than Cana. But 2,000 years ago, Cana was the big city, and Nazareth was really little. And so it was kind of like someone from Dallas being like, can anything good come out of Fort Worth? Not really. These are little, like, country people, little, little towns. And yet there was still this kind of snobbery, like that backwater place over there. And Philip says, come and see. And then Nathaniel comes and he meets Jesus, and he has this very funny exchange where Jesus says something about being known. And Nathaniel says, how do you know me? And he said, well, I saw you sitting under the fig tree, and it freaks Nathaniel out. Because Nathaniel was out there by himself, and yet Jesus seems to know him in a very real way. And so Nathaniel's response to Jesus is really because how could he not respond? Jesus obviously knows him, and being known really changes what Nathaniel thinks about this man. Now, calling disciples, Jesus calling the disciples, this is not a new idea to us. We know that Jesus walked around and he called some people and they began to follow him. And those stories of following are stories that sometimes make sense and sometimes don't. I think the way that Philip responded to Jesus probably doesn't really make sense to us because Philip just seemed to just, boom, just follow. I don't know that most of us would respond that way. Now, Nathaniel's response to Jesus, that sounds a little more legitimate, where Jesus says, follow me, and Nathaniel says, we'll see about that. And then Jesus says something about Nathaniel that really opens him up, and Nathaniel feels seen in a way that is so intimate and vulnerable, and he can't help but respond to the powerful way that Jesus sees right through to his heart. Now, that sounds a little bit more like the way that we might respond to Jesus. Doubtful at first, reticent at first, but once we give Jesus a chance to show us just how much he knows of us, then I don't know that we can help but respond. Being known is not something that is completely comfortable to most adults. And I would say in this room, being known. Now, I don't mean the known like right now where you've put yourself together and you've come to church and you're looking pretty. I mean being known like really, really, where you don't want anyone to know those kinds of things that you do or those secrets that you have or the way that you look in the morning when you've been out too late the night before. That kind of known is not something that most of us are so comfortable with. We like to kind of present ourselves. We like to make sure that we put our best foot forward, that we create a good example for others. And I think that over time, what happens, especially with adults, is that as we seek to be perceived well, to present well, we can begin to believe that that good presentation is actually who we are. We can begin to believe that the very best of us, you know, with all the filters and everything, that that's actually true. And then when we experience someone who can actually see us for who we are, that can actually be a bit off-putting. Now, in my experience, a group that can actually see adults for who they are and can make most adults very uncomfortable would be a room full of children. Children do not care at all about your clothes or your persona or your job or what you do out in the world. Children see right through all of that and they see right to our heart. There was a recent study done 
where a group of children gathered together and they were engaged by some researchers to figure out what children actually think about adults. And so after a number of conversations and warming the kids up, they began to identify opinions that children have of adults. Children believe that adults think they should know everything, but kids know that they don't. And they're okay with that. Adults just need to realize they might have forgotten stuff, said Ben. Adults can't think they're just the best because they've already been through their childhood, noted Jamie. And Harry pointed out, just because they're older and they've already been to school, it doesn't mean they paid attention in school. (laughs) And Eve said, they say that they were once a child too, but we're different and I think we should be allowed to have our own opinions sometimes. Yes. Children see us for who we are, and that's sort of the heart of today's gospel lesson. Nathaniel resists Jesus' call, not because Nathaniel's a bad guy. In fact, Nathaniel's probably a really good guy. We assume that Nathaniel is a good Jewish man because when Philip goes and says to Nathaniel, we found the person whom Moses and the prophet spoke of, Well, the assumption here is that Nathaniel knows all about Moses and the prophets. Nathaniel's a good, faithful guy. And so Nathaniel, as a good guy, still resists Jesus' call until, of course, Jesus pushes all of the stuff away and goes right to his heart. And then Nathaniel responds, being known like that, that's a gift. That's a true gift. We see the same kind of thing in the Old Testament lesson today about Samuel and Eli. Samuel being dedicated to the temple, being dedicated to God, was put with Eli, who was a trusted person, trusted to help guide Samuel in his development and his formation. And even Eli, who was very close to God, took a minute to realize that God was calling out to Samuel and finally said to Samuel, say to God, speak because your servant is listening. Samuel, dedicated to God, needed a trusted person in his life to help him perceive and interpret and respond thoughtfully to what God was saying. Does that sound familiar? We are all here today because we know enough to know that we need other people in our lives to help us to respond to God the way that we should. God is calling out to each one of us. God is speaking to each one of us. And it is so easy, regardless of how good a person we are, regardless of how dedicated we may feel that we are, to respond to God on our own. We need other people in our lives. We need people who care enough about us to nudge us and to teach us and to form us so that we can respond the way that God hopes that we would respond. I think of that when I think of this church. We are all better because we are a part of this church. We are better because we give to one another here, that we care about one another enough to actually share our energies, to share our passions, to share our gifts with one another. Just this past week, I learned a little bit about what we have done as a church over the last few months and over the last year. Just an example of some of the ministry impacts that we have made here at St. Michael include in 2023, in the year, we made over 9,000 pastoral care touches to people in this community. People who may have been in the hospital, who may have had a bad diagnosis, who may have lost a loved one, who may have lost a job or going through any kind of problems, over 9,000 times we as a community reached out and cared for and touched the people within these walls. Just in the last six plus weeks of the holiday season, kind of right before Thanksgiving through Christmas, through multiple different agencies like Jubilee, St. Philip's, NDSM, VNA, Foster, Senior Source, the VA, and internationally with Taylor and Amistad, we touched over 3,000 children, families, and seniors with aid those who were most vulnerable over the holiday season, whether that was through gifts or financial support or food, you name it, over 3,000 people just in the last few weeks. That is what happens when we come together and we share our gifts with one another. That's what happens when Jesus calls and we respond 
that we are servants and we are listening. God is calling us again. And no matter what we have done and what we are currently doing, there is always a way that we can respond more deeply, more faithfully, and with even more intentionality. There are so many ways that we can use our gifts together. As you sit here today, as you watch online, I invite you to consider how God continues to call you, how God is trying to break through, break through to your spirit so that you can use your gifts more fully, with more intentionality, so that we can be transformed with one another. Do not let yourself resist we are here with one another. If you are saying yes right now, great. Turn to your neighbor. Help them to say yes too. We can all give in phenomenal ways. We can all give so much more than we think we can. And we are part of this community so that we help one another to say yes to God's call. Do not resist because God is reaching out to you and we, together, right here in this church, we, when we say yes, can change our world. Amen.